Church. It's great to have you with us, whether you're here in the sanctuary or watching on Zoom or watching the recording afterwards. Um, my name is Greg Moulton. Uh, most of you know I'm a deacon of the church. I'll be leading the service today. Our, our pastor, Dave Heath, is on a well-deserved vacation, and our regular supply pastor, Sally Colgrove, is also out of town. Sally will be uh, leading the service next week, but for today, the inmates have taken over the asylum, and uh, I will do my best. Um, so there, there is one change in the bulletin. Um, Brian Miles had been scheduled as reader, but he wasn't able to make it, so Susan Albert graciously stepped up to be our reader, and uh, so please join Susan in the call to worship. Morning. Morning. Even though we don't always feel it, God is with us. Yet God is with us. All around us there is fear and hopelessness. God brings to us hope and peace. We place our trust in God's abundant love. Let us freely without fear. Open our hearts to God's healing words of hope. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is found on page 442 in the hymnal, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Thank you. 
Okay, we now come to the time for announcements or news about what's going on in the church. Please read the uh, insert in the order of worship. There's a number of things mentioned there. And if anyone in the congregation has something, so we will bring the microphone. Well, there's this great um, statement in the bulletin um, referring to the puzzles and yarn that we got from the Pendletons. And um, we're going to have a selection out every week of puzzles. And those are by donation. There's a little coffee can with a hole in the top. You can just put in a donation um, and take as many as you want. We have 300, so <laughs> the supply will last. Um, and same with the yarn, just look in the closet and pick some out and maybe knit something or not. But that's their legacy, part of it. Um, just a reminder, there's a sign-up sheet up front for flowers. Okay, anything else? Okay. So with that, we turn more intentionally to worship. Um, please join in the opening prayer. Oh God, you richly bless us with all that we need, bread from the earth and the bread of heaven, which gives life to the world. Free us from all fear and worry, that, trusting in your goodness, we may always praise your mighty deeds and give you thanks for the bounty of your gifts. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
That was just beautiful. Thank you. Okay, um, next, uh, Betsy is going to do a message for all ages. <clears throat> This is truly a message for all ages. So one of the words when I read the scripture this week, and when I looked at what Greg told me he was gonna be preaching on, worry. So I worried a lot about it, and I thought, nope, God's gonna take care of us. So with the help of you, I worried about, it. what was I gonna say? What do you guys worry about? Politics. Politics. Eric. World peace. What to cook for supper. What to cook for supper. That's a big one. That's a big one. Anything else? Climate change. Grandchildren. Grandchildren. Your health? School starting again. I was going to ask you if you guys thought about that. So we have a lot of worry. And I had a, um, we had a pastor in our old church who preached on worry. And one of the things he talked about was when you wake up in the middle of the night and it seems like even God doesn't love you in the middle of the night. So I wanted to bring, and I'm going to read it because I can never remember it right, and this is something you will all be very familiar with. God grant the, me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And I think when we talk about God taking care of us, I think really... What God is trying to say is through prayer, figure out what you can change, figure out what you can't change. It's not wrong to worry if worry helps you change your situation. But when we do worry about politics and about climate change and world peace, we do our part and then we have to recognize that God is there to take care of us. So let us pray. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for taking care of me. Thank you, God, for loving everybody. Thank you, God. And please help us with our worries about climate change and world peace, etc. You don't have to repeat that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Betsy. Um, our hymn of approach is "There Is a Bomb in Gilead," number four hundred. Thank you. 
Okay, for today's scripture, I didn't stick with the lectionary. I chose something else. Um, it's a familiar passage um, from the teachings of Jesus, actually from the Sermon on the Mount. Um, I picked it because I like it and, and I want to talk about it. Um, but it. It's a favorite passage of mine. So please listen as Susan reads the words of Jesus. This morning I'm reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will I eat, or what will I drink, or what shall we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Thank you, Susan. <clears throat> so, as I mentioned, the Bible passage that Susan just read is a favorite of mine. Um, in the first place, my favorite section of the whole Bible is the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew. It has so many of Jesus' important teachings. It's got the Beatitudes, the Golden Rule, the Lord's Prayer, and lots of other good stuff. And my favorite part of the Sermon on the Mount is this, this passage we just heard. I mean, it's, it's so reassuring, it's beautifully phrased. I, I liked it even before I was really involved with religion, and certainly before I was going to church or anything like that. I like it so much, I had it read at my mother's memorial service, even though it's not really appropriate for memorial service. I also had it read at my wedding, even though I mean, it really doesn't fit for a wedding either. But, so one thing I got to kick out at, at that time. So for Erica and me, planning our wedding was in Boston. It is just difficult and stressful. Um, add that to the typical bridegroom anxiety. And I, I was a nervous wreck by the time of our wedding day. So when the minister read this passage and he got the part on the end about don't worry about tomorrow. Today's trouble is enough for today. I, I was thinking, yeah, you got that right. <laughs> today's trouble is plenty, but, but it, it all worked out. Um, now, there are a few little things I actually don't like about this passage. At, at one point, Jesus takes a swipe at the Gentiles, where he said, yeah, don't worry about these things, what to eat, drink, or wear because of Gentiles strive for those things. I mean, I'm a Gentile, not Jewish, as are, I guess most or all of us here. So try not to take it personally, but Jesus is being a little politically incorrect here. But, <laughs> but you know, and another thing, it's really not totally practical advice. I mean, it's actually a good idea to occasionally think about what you're going to eat tomorrow and maybe have a plan to make that happen. So you shouldn't totally ignore the future. But as he often does, Jesus is exaggerating, using hyperbole to, to make a point. 
um, which we'll get to. My only other issue is he doesn't say things like this more often. I mean, th there are other instances in scripture where he says, don't be afraid or don't let your hearts be troubled. But this is the only time I know of that he expresses his thoughts so clearly and with such beautiful poetic language. I just, I wish there were more of it. So why, why do I like this so much? As I mentioned, even when I was not really religious, I ran across this passage and it really resonated with me. The message is so attractive and reassuring. Um, well, also, I am, I am a boomer, a child of the 60s, I guess. And it even has a little bit of a 60s vibe. You know, don't worry about tomorrow, live for today. Um, at, at one point, I was quite interested in Buddhist philosophy, and there's a little of that flavor here, too. Um, don't be attached to desires and wants. Let go of your attachments. Live in the present moment. Um, but really, the main reason I like this, it's the basic message. God takes care of us. God knows what we need and will provide it. I also like the fact that God takes care of all creation. He mentions the birds of the air, the plants in the field, and us. We're all part of the creation that God is watching over. Now, Jesus is saying, don't worry. Um, in fact, I think he's really not saying, you know, don't even think about the future. He, he's saying... That's different than worrying about it constantly, especially if the worrying becomes constant or obsessive. Um, in fact, I'm reminded of a quote from, from the Dalai Lama, speaking of Buddhism. He says, if a problem is fixable, if a situation is such that you can do something about it, then there's no need to worry. If it's not fixable, then there's no help in worrying. There's no benefit in worrying whatsoever. So again, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. Um, as Betsy said, sometimes it helps to worry a little bit to determine if there is a solution or if there isn't to decide how you're going to deal with the situation. But again, the point is that excessive or constant worrying is pointless. And beyond that, it can be destructive or harmful. Now, this speaks directly to me. I, I'm a worrier, world class. I, I'm always worried about something, my health, my family, the house, the car, the church, uh, whatever. I mean, I, I know better, but I keep doing it. So I think I need to listen to Jesus and the Dalai Lama and try to let go of worrying. Because constant worry, besides being unpleasant, it also prevents you from acting productively, it makes you self-centered, not open to the people and situations around you. In addition, according to Jesus, it indicates a lack of faith. So, yeah, he, he mentions, uh, you know, if you're worried about, why you're worried about what you're gonna wear or whatever, oh ye of little faith, as he says, if I'm constantly worrying about things, it's a sign I don't really have full faith in God. If I did, I'd realize that God has things covered. He'll take care of me and us. So I guess I need to work on that. So what does Jesus propose that we do instead of worrying? He says, But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Okay, how do we do that? We all know some of the answers. Worship, come to church, pray, read the Bible. But there are also the other things that Jesus taught us. Feed the hungry, help the poor and the sick, treat others as you would be treated. Of course, I mean, these things are good to do anyway, but there is a bonus. If you're doing the work of God, either worship or service to others, your, your worries tend to be less. You may go away entirely. I find if I'm doing something to help others, help someone else, or, or volunteering in a good cause, 
I really don't think about the things I was worried about. And it works in the other direction too. If you're spending less time and effort worrying, you're more free to act effectively, more open to the world around you and the needs of others. So doing God's work reduces your worries and worrying less helps you get closer to God and do God's work. So Jesus does tell us not to worry so much. But I think there's also a deeper message here. One reason I like, love this scripture passage so much is it addresses one of my core beliefs, which is God takes care of us. And there is a corollary to this, which follows logically. Everything is going to be okay. I do believe this, despite my tendency to worry and expect the worst. I mean, Things may happen, go wrong, but in the end, deep down, I believe that things will work out. We don't know how, we certainly don't know when, and sometimes it's hard to picture both what's going on in our own lives or things happening in the world, but that's where faith comes in. Everything is going to be okay because God takes care of us. And Jesus told us so. So, amen. Okay, we now come to the time where we lift up um, prayers of joys and concerns. Um, please look. Please look at the prayer list in the uh, insert in the bulletin. Keep those names in mind. And do we have any? Um, that anyone would like to raise you. I have two concerns. One is Marlene. She called me yesterday. She's not feeling very well. <clears throat> she had an appointment a week from Tuesday, but because she seems to be not getting better but getting worse, she has an appointment on this Tuesday that Renee is going to take her to. So she, you know, apologized for not being here as only Marlene would do, <laughs> but um, so hopefully she'll get some answers on Tuesday. <clears throat> and my brother-in-law, Jeff, received his liver transplant Saturday. That surgery went well, however, his kidneys haven't begun to work yet, and he's on dialysis, so prayers for continued healing and something to kickstart those kidneys so that he can move forward with his healing. Thank you. I just want to thank everybody for their prayers and support and their cards and their love and their words um, for my family and I. Um, I was going to Mississippi to help my dad with a procedure for his back. And my mom had gone into the hospital a Friday before that, um, but rapidly declined by Saturday morning. And so Solvay and I were down there um, by Sunday morning, but she passed on Saturday evening. Um, so it was good to be with everybody, even though it was very hard. Um, and I thank you all for your support. Um, the other thing to mention is that maybe we can shift some prayers to Archie. Um, he's been in the hospital um, since last Thursday. I think longer than that. I'm trying to think of when it was. Maybe early. It was earlier in the week. And he had severe debilitating back pain. Uh, he, they found another infection in his bloodstream and he has an infection in his back, um, some in his knee and some on the heart valve. But the heart valve hasn't changed since the last time uh, that the doctors gathered to decide whether or not they would try to do surgery, but it would be pretty risky on the heart valve. So they decided not to. 
and that's not giving him any problems. The biggest problem was his back pain. Um, so they had decided to continue with IV antibiotics, which has been helpful. Um, and he's not in a great deal of pain just laying there anymore, but now um, it, it's pretty intense when he tries to move, so he hasn't been able to walk. Um, so he should be getting transferred to a rehab center with it pretty soon because he can't go home on his own yet. Um, so, yeah, that's my update. Thank you everyone for their support. Anything else? Okay, let us have a moment of silence, followed by, by prayer. Dear God, we raise these joys and concerns. Um, please be with Merlene as she struggles with um, health issues, give her support and give, help the providers um, have wisdom and skill to, to resolve her problem. Also pray for Jeff, Susan's brother-in-law, um, recovering from liver transplant, kidney issues. Again, be with him and his family as he struggles with these issues. Be with Katie's family as they um, deal with the loss of her mother. Um, thank you for providing the, the support and love of, um, of friends and family in this difficult time. Um, and we pray for Archie struggling with health issues. Be, be with him and with those trying to help him get better. And, um, you know, we certainly pray for him to recover and, uh, and get better. And with, with other joys and concerns that were um, unspoken, please, and other people dealing with, with, with whatever issues, please be, be with us all and give us your love and support. We pray in Jesus' name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. In this is day, our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, we now come to the time for our offering. Give as you can to support the work, work of the church. And the ushers will take the collection. So.
dedication. Um, it's one of my personal favorites and it happens to fit with the theme today. Um, His eye is on the sparrow, number S13, in the beginning of your hymn.
benediction, I, I have a saying from St. Teresa of Avila. She was a Spanish nun mystic in the 1500s. In her words, let nothing upset you. Let nothing frighten you. Everything is changing. God alone is changeless. Patience attains the goal. Who has God lacks nothing. God alone fills every need. Go in peace. Amen.